In the last video, we started to create this section via projection. So we were projecting from our plan that we'd created earlier and projecting horizontally from this section that we're using as a bit of a trace reference. Now we haven't finished detailing this yet, but we're going to leave it for a second and we're going to place it onto a layout because we want to start to understand um, the process of how to get this published even though the drawing's incomplete, then that way, whether the drawing's complete or not, we can always print it out as a draft. Um, so we're going to have a look at how we do that now. Now, this is a bad template. There's a lot of extra information, which I don't want here. So I'm going to have to just stick with what I've got, but I'll reduce some information to try to keep it cleaner. Now what we had been doing was talking about the idea of using an A1 landscape master. And we had the margins at 10 millimeters. So I'm just going to repeat some of this information very quickly. Now onto this, most importantly, what we did was to place Uh, horizontal title block. Oh, let's just delete everything that they've got here. Start again. Most importantly for now, that needed to have your email address and your name. And then in terms of a layout, I'm going to keep this out of this folder. So the idea with an A1 is that it should be big enough that we can fit it all in. Right click layout settings, we need to use our A1 master. Now in terms of our views, our plan overlay needs to be saved as a, a saved view and placed on the layout. So how do we do that? We go into our saved views, we're going to again not use all this stuff. Let's make a new one. We'll just call this plans. Right click, save current view. Floor plan. And we'll do the same thing with our section. So zoom in on the area that we want. Go to our save views or our view map right click in our folder where we want to save it, save current view and we'll call it section, it's fine we're not going to worry too much about any of these other settings and then going to our layout we'll then drag and drop these onto our page sorry I didn't do that correctly can we undo that, undo what I want to do is go to my view map and drag and drop it from here because otherwise we end up creating extra drawings that we don't want like that so go to our, our view map drag and drop view map drag and drop now I'm going to select both of those and go into the title and just turn off that title I can minimize this just so it fits to my page it's going to not have a lot of information at the moment, that's fine. We can add more information as we're going, we just want to get something on the page for now. And we see that because it's an A1 drawing, we're fitting it on this page very, very easily. There's a lot of spare room. So I'm not going to be too precious about where I put it at the moment. And of course they don't relate like they did previously, but we're eventually going to add in 
external elevations to this as well. So once we add those in, it'll start to make more sense about the scale and what we're doing. So that's it for now. Uh, now that we've created that, we can go back into our section and we can start to add in more information. So we could start to look at the idea of set down for our brick veneer. What would we use as a set down? Probably one brick. Oh, sorry, let's change that to single line. And in terms of a representation, what is that? I can delete these later if I want to, just to, to make this really clear, but that would be our external brick skin, our internal brick skin, this is our cavity, and then our timber frame. exterior, our timber frame interior, and our plasterboard lining. So now that I've got that I can just delete those, trim that, and I can start to add in more information. Now I have to choose what scale am I trying to represent. So am I drawing every brick? No, I don't want to draw every brick at this scale, that's not the point. So I'm only going to be representing it 1 to 100. So I'll show uh, Brickwork Hatch to represent this, but not really much more information than that. Now how deep is this footing? Let's say it's 600. How wide? 400. I could fillet it, or if I go back into my, sorry, I could intersect it, or I could put a chamfer and maybe 100 mil on that chamfer, which would then allow me to know that that's 100 millimeters. Copy that, which would allow then me to have a 50 mil sand base, 50 mil gravel base and then uh, an earth fill underneath that and of course the intention is that I could then have this as my exterior ground line. So I'm starting to detail this up. Uh, now where am I getting this information from? I'm not tracing it from anywhere you might note uh, but if I went over here we'd see that what I'm drawing is very similar to what we've got here. I'm just um, drawing out of experience. We see that they've got 161 um, so sort of two bricks and I did one brick, it doesn't matter. The point is that, again, this is a bit of a, a trace reference, but not detailed, and then we're going to be detailing it more here. So hopefully we'll end up with something that looks a little bit more uh, accurate, a representation than this, um, but it's okay if it gets changed along the process. It's, it's a bit of a, a design exercise or a construction exercise. All right, so in the next one, we'll have a look at a bit more detail, how to add the fills into this, how to clean it up. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on this section. We just want to get enough to be able to make sure that it's working, and then we can use the section to start to create an elevation. But we'll see how much time we've got. That may end up being for next week.